This video will be going over all Hunter exotic armor pieces in the base Destiny 2 game. I will give a PvE and PvP rank for each one. At the end of the video, if you're into tier lists, I will provide that as well. If that's the only information you seek, skip to this portion of the video. If you want to know more about one particular piece of armor, here are the timestamps you can skip to. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Celestial Nighthawk has the Hawkeye Hack, modifies Golden Gun to fire a single high damage shot. Enemies eliminated by the shot explode. This helm is one of the best possible exotics you could use for PvE if you're a gunslinger. The upside is that you get to deal massive damage with your Golden Gun Super as one shot. The downside is that any group utility that you had via creating orbs with precision shots went away, as you will only create two orbs off the one shot that you have, provided that you land it as a precision shot. The shot from Celestial will do 6 times the damage of a normal shot, so you do want to be the bottom spec to make that shot crit, since the top spec will leave you with a short golden gun duration that can't crit. So obviously this helm will be used to deal massive damage to single targets, however it does have some slight utility built in with the shot also causing the target to explode if it died from that shot. However flavorful it is to make an enemy explode because you hit them so hard, it really isn't that practical though since you can only do it to one target. In Destiny 1 this perk could just be selected on the gunslinger tree itself, and it was great for giving gunslinger some AoE ability, but now that effect is relegated to weapons like Sunshot instead of your super. While this is one of the best exotics to use in PvE for gunslingers, it's one of the worst for PvP gunslingers. Golden Gun is basically 3 to possibly 6 kills in PvP. The only utility that you're getting from increased damage is the ability to one shot an active super without critting them, assuming you're running the bottom spec. I'd much rather have the multiple shots with my super, especially since I only get it maybe once or twice a match. For PvE, this exotic gets a 5 out of 5. For PvP, a 1 out of 5. Next up is Foe Tracer with the Relentless Tracker perk. It visually marks targeted enemies, and then you will deal more damage to low health marked enemies. Foe Tracer has one of the most powerful effects in the game with its damage increase to low health marked enemies. The bonus damage starts at the last one fifth of an enemy's health and will give a 1% buff to damage. As that marked target gets lower in health, the damage increase ramps up to 30% for the final little bit of health. This effect will be more pronounced in PvE where you have more opportunities to deal damage to larger health pool enemies. Normal enemies however will not really see this damage increase since they all die in 1-3 headshots for most weapons. So if you're using this helm just be aware that this damage increase is only going to be useful against ultras and other bosses. The sad thing is that most bosses don't last long enough to see longer uses from this part of the perk. Aside from Callus and the Aether Resupply public event, everything will generally die too quick to have a long uptime on that damage bump. In PvP you aren't really going to use the damage increase either since a Guardian at 20% health is going to die from just about anything. While the damage increase won't be extremely beneficial, you will get some extreme use from the tracking effect. After scoping in on a target for a short time, you will be able to track them through walls if they seek cover. This is a powerful ability in PvP since you know when someone is going to peek or is disengaging, allowing you to push up safely. Information like this is always going to be insanely strong in PvP, so this helm is definitely worth using if you don't have an exotic that you really feel strong about. For PvE, this gets a 4 out of 5. For PvP, a 3 out of 5. The final helm is Knucklehead Radar with the Upgrade Sensor Pack perk, which provides radar while aiming. This helm works for all weapons, yes, that does include sniper rifles, so if you're annoyed by the radar delay when you descope, this helm will be a godsend for you. In PvP, having radar information is always going to mean that you will never be unknowingly flanked, assuming you actually pay attention to the radar. Since this helm doesn't have any other benefits, I feel like it cements it as a PvP exotic, as you traditionally want some sort of other utility effect from an exotic in PvE. Enemies don't typically push and flank you there, so you don't need to always be aware of your radar. In PvE, this gets a 2 out of 5. For PvP, a 4 out of 5. First up for gloves is the Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves with Spring Loaded Mounting Perk. Increases sidearm ready and reload speed. So, do you like sidearms? These will increase your sidearms ready speed to be near instantaneous and will increase the reload speed by about 40%. The effect they give is substantial, but I'm kind of sitting here going, why? 
Sidearms are basically useless in PvE due to their low damage and range. The only ones worth using there are the Omelon 3 burst ones. Even then, I'd much rather just have my energy weapon be something more well-rounded. In PvP, again, the Omelon ones are the only ones worth your time, but do you want your exotic to be devoted to that? As of this video, the Omelon sidearms are definitely powerful enough to warrant just using them on their own, so these gloves would pair nicely with that playstyle. However, if those sidearms ever got nerfed, then these gloves wouldn't have anything to pair with in PvP. Before I do give the rating, I need to say that these gloves do exactly what they say they do, so if I was basing rating solely on that alone, it would be a 5 out of 5 in everything, but I also have to judge that these gloves doing what they're supposed to do is a viable strategy for every place in the game. That is answered with a resounding no. In PvE, these get a 1 out of 5. For PvP, a 2 out of 5. The second pair of gloves are the Young Ahamkara's Spine. They have the Wish Dragon Teeth perk, which increases trip mine duration and marks enemies damaged by the blast. Young Ahamkara's Spine is another carryover exotic from Destiny 1. However, their power level was reduced a bit in the transition since they no longer grant an extra trip mine. The effect on trip mine duration remains the same though. A standard trip mine will last 10 seconds, while these gloves will extend that duration to 30 seconds. In addition to that, anything damaged by the blast will have an X marker placed on it, allowing you to track that target. The idea behind this is that you place a trap well in advance of an encounter, and if your target flees, you will be able to track them. However, since these don't really provide any damage increases to marked targets or an extra trip mine, it only serves to extend the duration of your grenade. That isn't a particularly effective use of your exotic slot in my opinion. I'd much, much rather have an exotic that has a more impactful effect on either my gameplay or my group utility. As a side note, this is the only armor piece for hunters in the game that features zero mobility, so that's an actual plus side if you highly value getting your mobility stat as low as possible. In PvE, these get a 1 out of 5. In PvP, a 2 out of 5. For chess pieces, we have the Dragon Shadow with the Wraith Metal Mail perk. This grants increased movement and weapon handling speed for a short time after dodging. The Dragon Shadow chess piece is one of the exotics that can help build upon more aggressive playstyles. The Wraith Metal Mail perk will last for 10 seconds. Since there isn't a counter on it in the game, <clears throat> Bungie, could you please get on that? I suggest you look at your dodge ability after using it. Once it's about halfway recharged, then you know the perk is expired. So, what do you get for those 10 seconds? For starters, a 5% increase to your run speed, yet this also doesn't increase your walking speed oddly. At least, it didn't in my tests. You can also get a massive boost to all weapon handling speeds, which affects swapping weapons and aiming down sights. Finally, you get about a 20% increase to your reload speed for all weapons, which isn't mentioned anywhere in the perk for some reason. Dragon Shadow is one of the more deceptive exotics in the game. The boosts it gives to your character aren't substantial by any means, but they can help promote extremely aggressive playstyles that want to make the most of their characters during PvP engagements. When paired with either Night Stalker or Arc Strider in PvP, you have a recipe for an extremely fun close quarters build. The movement speed will help you close gaps or retreat after dodging. The reload speed is great for replenishing your weapons after an engagement so you are ready for the next one. The handling speed is also solid if you need to swap weapons to take care of some unexpected enemies. Personally, I've built an entire playstyle around this chess piece where I'm constantly going invisible to close the gap, then taking advantage of the handling speed by swapping between my sword and hand cannon. It's extremely fun and offers up some pretty spectacular moments when it works right. I am hesitant about recommending this chess piece to the average player though. If you aren't aggressively using dodge or know how to properly disengage from a fight, it will not benefit you. Also, if you're a PvE player, it isn't going to be the most useful thing for you. Reloading and handling increases are nice, but they do not live up to the power level of some of the other options out there. I guess the best way to sum up this exotic is that its skill floor is much higher than many other exotics out there. It takes a large time investment to learn how to use it properly. Once you do though, it becomes one of the top tier exotics for PvP in all specs. For PvE, this gets a 3 out of 5. For PvP, a 4 out of 5. Up next is the Lucky Raspberry chess piece with the Probability Matrix perk. 
It increases the chaining capabilities of Arcbolt Grenade and has a chance to recharge at each time it deals damage. This is another carryover armor from Destiny 1. Instead of allowing you to just respawn with your grenade, this one will have a chance to give you your grenade back when you deal damage with Arcbolt Grenade. I'm not entirely sure what the percent on this is, since testing this would take hours upon hours of throwing grenades at single targets. Just know that the more targets that get hit with your Arcbolt, the higher chance you have of getting your grenade back. So if you see a big pack of enemies, chances are you will have another grenade to throw. If you see one enemy, probably not. Obviously, you're going to stand to gain the most benefits of this in PvE, since you have higher groupings of enemies there. In PvP, you're going to hit a max of four people, but normally just one or two. When it procs in PvP though, you have a higher chance of getting a kill since throwing two grenades at people is generally kind of amazing. If you're playing a game mode like Control or Countdown where you know where your enemies position, then the chess piece can be pretty good when they are likely grouped up on an objective. However, due to the randomness of the perk, I can't really say you should be using it. In PvE, this gets a 3 out of 5, and in PvP, a 3 out of 5. The final chess piece is the Raiden Flux, with the Synapse Junction's perk. It causes quick successive attacks with Arc Staff to increase its damage output and duration. This chest is basically the exotic that all others are judged against as an Arc Strider. The duration increase is great because it allows you to put out even more damage against a single mob or just give you more time to get to another group of enemies. The damage increases three times, ending at a 72% total damage increase to your Arc Staff. In PvE, you should basically just use this chest piece if you have any plans of using your super. The increased time and damage really take Arcstrider to another level there, be it stunning a Nightfall boss until it's dead, soloing public event bosses, or just killing endless waves of adds. This is what you should use. For PvP, the damage increase won't matter too much. If you somehow manage to get up stacks, then you should be able to one-shot all other supers. The real benefit, though, is the increase in the super's duration. While Arcstrider isn't the best super, you have to respect how long that super can last, especially if you're getting a few kills here and there with this chess piece active. Still, you are modifying one of the weaker supers in the game for PvP, and doing nothing to improve the neutral game of the Arc Strider with your exotic. Something like Foe Tracer or Knucklehead Radar will definitely be better since you will always be using those, unlike Raiden Flux, which will only get used once, maybe twice in a match. For PvE, this gets a 5 out of 5. For PvP, a 3 out of 5. Finally, let's get into some boots. We'll start with the Lucky Pants with the Illegally Modded Holster perk. This perk increases hand cannon ready speed and initial accuracy. If you're a hand cannon enthusiast, then these pants might be right up your alley. They give all hand cannons equipped a massive increase to ready speed, which can come in handy with some of the slower rate of fire ones. The Illegally Modded Holster perk will last for 2 seconds when you swap to a hand cannon and will increase the initial accuracy during that time. So the idea is to swap to a hand cannon and get off a perfect shot in the blink of an eye, as initial accuracy really only affects your first shot. You can see how it affects the hipfire crosshairs here. Now, are these practical? They do give hand cannons a much needed accuracy boost and do promote a playstyle that involves swapping to them when truly needed instead of just trying to use them in every possible engagement. That isn't a particularly powerful effect in my opinion. The real reason to use these is the handling speed buff. While that does only affect swapping to the weapon and not aiming down sights, it is worth it for some PvP engagements, since hand cannons can pack a huge punch in the close range. For PvE, no, these have no utility or anything of substantial value that can be brought to solo or group play. For PvE, these get a 1 out of 5. For PvP, a 3 out of 5. Up next are the Orpheus Rigs with the Uncanny Arrows perk. This provides ability energy for each enemy tethered by Shadow Shot Anchors. Orpheus Rig is easily the most powerful exotic for PvE-focused Night Stalkers. It will grant you back grenade and melee energy when you tether enemies. In addition, every enemy caught in your tether will refill your super energy. As a warning, this doesn't work well with the bottom tree of Night Stalker since you only regain super energy once you've used all of it. Since Quiver Tether has such a short range, you don't stand to hit as many things and get said energy back. Tethering 6 enemies will get your grenade and melee energy refunded, which you can then use to throw into the tethered enemies for more damage and more super energy. It takes about 10 enemies being tethered to fully refund your super. This doesn't have to happen immediately either. If they wandered into your tether after its initial grab, it will still give you energy, since the tether causes enemies to share damage. You really only have to hit about 7-8 to eight targets and then kill them to refund your
Commander Super. That's fairly easy to do since in strikes, public events, and near every PvE activity, it has enemies grouped up. These boots really take Night Soccer to the next level for group utility, since Tether will just allow you to clear through content so much quicker, while producing stupid amounts of orbs for your friends. The only thing to remember is if you die while the Tether is in flight, you won't get any super energy returned. You need to be alive for that effect to take place. While these are amazing for PvE, they are pretty bad for PvP. Unless you hit an entire team with your tether, you won't see much of a benefit from these boots. And since you only get tether up maybe once or twice in a match, you won't provide any benefit to the 99.9% .9 of the match that you aren't using your super. Use one of the other numerous PvP exotics that affect how you play outside your super. For PvE, these get a 5 out of 5. For PvP, a 1 out of 5. Finally, we have the Stompies with the Hydraulic Boosters perk. These increases the sprint speed and slide distance of the wielder, and improves double jump as well. The Stompies are the very definition of an exotic that helps you without you investing much into it. They will increase your sprint speed by 5% and increase your slide distance. These are things you are doing constantly, so you will see a benefit to your neutral game in both PvP and PvE. Now, as far as what the vague improves double jump text means, you will see an increase in height to your strafe and height double jump abilities. These will not affect your base jump height, just the ability once you activate it. The perk doesn't seem to work with triple jump at all though. You are going to get the most use out of these in PvP since that is basically all about movement. Having an increase to slide distance allows you to close the gap quicker or escape easier and then transition into an increased sprint speed. The increase in verticality is also going to be useful to some players since you can easily juke people out by jumping up into the air over a doorway and then engaging them once you've landed behind them when they rush you. These boots don't really offer up much to PvE. I've said it a ton of times in this video, but I generally just want something that helps out with my super and gives me more utility. The most these offer there is helping you get cover with increased slide distance. The run speed is nice though for some of the more movement heavy encounters in the raid. For PvE, these get a 2 out of 5. For PvP, a 4 out of 5. That about does it for the individual reviews and rankings. If you wanted to see these all ranked up against each other, here are all of the armors ranked up against each other in PvE in one helpful diagram. Now, here are the armors ranked against each other in PvP. I hope you found the information here helpful. If you did, a positive rating would be appreciated. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.